Hi, hello! Today I'm going to rank my 10 luxuriously loosened lipsticks from Lisa Eldridge. Now, for those of you who have been around my channel for a little bit, uh, you have heard me talk more than enough about these lipsticks. I actually have a couple of uh, lips watch party videos of my Lisa Eldridge lipstick collection. At this point, the last episode of that is rather outdated because um, I filmed it a while ago and I'm pretty sure that since then I've acquired at least five more lipsticks. But you know, I'm building up towards another uh, Liz Eldridge lip swatch party video. But I also figured in the meantime, 10 is a really good number to swatch. So we're going to talk about my specifically luxuriously loosened lipstick collection today. And again, if you're a long-term subscriber, you will know exactly what kind of formula and what kind of lipstick we're talking about. But I'm going to assume that amongst you, there are people who have never heard about the luxuriously loosened lipstick from Lisa Eldridge. So please let me introduce you to this heavenly formula. So first and foremost, we are talking about uh, Lisa Eldridge, the makeup artist. She does editorial makeup, she does makeup for celebrities. Uh, she's an absolutely lovely person. Like from what I have seen from her uh, online personality, she comes across as the kindest, sweetest woman and her makeup is so well thought out. Everything that she puts out is just of sublime quality. Now you're allowed to think whatever you may want about the makeup because obviously makeup comes down to personal preferences and not everything is made for everyone, it's not going to suit everyone's taste, that much is clear, but you're not for a second allowed to have one bad thought about Lisa Eldridge because the woman is a national treasure. And I am so happy that she has decided to grace us with her makeup. Now today we're going to talk about specifically her sort of like cream lipstick formula. So let's get out some of the basics out of the way. Uh, if you've never seen a Lisa Eldridge lipstick, it comes in this beautiful old gold like vintage sort of casing with the Lisa Eldridge uh, logo here on top that my camera is now being blighted by my um, ring light then you may be not able to see very well but it has a little magnetic closure to it it is extremely elegant very hefty in the hand these lipsticks are expensive but they are also they just feel luxurious in every single way Again, I'm going to go by the assumption that maybe not everyone has heard of this lipstick. So, uh, Lisa Eldridge offers her lipsticks in three different formulas. You've got her velvets, which are like a matte lipstick, like a very um, vibrant, uh, pigmented, saturated color. Then she has her insanely saturated lipsticks, which are which only come in like a handful of colors. I want to say like three or four, uh, but don't quote me on it. And those are even more insanely pigmented than her velvets. And then the final formula that she currently offers in her lineup are the Luxuriously Loosens. So what are the Luxuriously Loosens? One might call them cream lipsticks or what I would prefer to call them, which is a tinted lip balm. But I want to emphasize here that when I talk about these lipsticks and them being a uh, tinted lip balm, they are a tinted lip balm that is in a league of their own. They are in their own category. Nothing is like these lipsticks. And they are so amazing. They have turned into my absolute favorite formula in that category. Uh, I want to write sonnets about them and I want to make sure that the world knows about these, which is why I'm putting out this specific content to talk about the luxuriously loosened formula because while they are talked about and I think they're universally loved by everyone who's ever tried them, I feel like they're not talked about enough on the internet. So it is, I have made it my personal mission to make sure that everyone knows how amazing these lipsticks are so that they sell out like hotcakes and they never, I never run yeah. I'm sorry, my husband came in and totally interrupted my train of thought. But I was going, what I was going before was that I wanted to make sure that the world knows about these lipsticks, they continue to sell as hot cakes, and there's no chance in hell that she's ever going to discontinue them because I am going to be heartbroken if that ever happens. So Lisa Eldridge, please, as, like as far as I'm concerned, I'll do my best, you know, I'll spread the word. You make sure that your lab has all the ingredients in place, uh, and that your brand never goes out of business so that we can continue this like fruitful collaboration where you make these amazing lipsticks and I use them up and repurchase them. Because I can tell you for a fact there are several lipsticks in here 
that I'm probably going to repurchase and I know from several of you that you have gone through these and you have repurchased them. So let's go back to the formula. What is the luxuriously loosened formula all about? Like I said, to me this is a buildable tinted lip balm but it has such unique qualities to it. A lot of these uh, tinted lip balms and I've tried a bunch including the one that I have on my lips right now by the way which is the tinted lip balm from Pat McGrath in the shade Dark Devotion uh, which is this beautiful berry shade that I never wear because I don't really like to wear berries all that much but I purchased this a really long time ago and I'm trying to use it up by just using it as a lip balm throughout the day so that's the reason I'm wearing it right now but it also gives me the opportunity to compare the two formulas because I do think that while they're in the same um, they could be considered in the same category. I think they're completely different type of products. So this one from uh, Pat McGrath feels more like a traditional, you know, buildable tinted lip balm. It is a little bit thick uh, in its texture, but it's still very comfortable. And b by this, I don't want you to get the impression that I'm bashing the Pat McGrath formula because the Pat McGrath formula is also amazing. Uh, and it is actually very comparable to one of the Gucci type formulas. Let me pull it up. So I recently purchased one of these from Gucci, uh, one of their, oh gosh, what are these called? They are their like tinted lip balm basically version of a lipstick in this beautiful uh, floral packaging. But these to me are very comparable to the ones from Pat McGrath in terms of how they apply and how they wear. They are uh, very lightly tinted you can build up the pigment they're very hydrating they're very substantial on the lips they are you know a thicker type formula and they're obviously not a long-lasting formula like none of these are really a long-lasting formula but there's a huge difference in to me how these apply and wear compared to the other two formulas so the luxuriously loosened they uh, go on as like a very uh, sheer wash of color depending on the shade actually some of the shades applied pretty pigmented but they have a little bit more of a light weightedness to the formula like the ones from gucci and pat are a little bit thicker uh in their texture which you know maybe your preference or maybe not i don't really mind either way but i just wanted to mention that they are different um and you can build these up actually quite a bit without them ever becoming gunky on your lips like a thick formula like this if you start to really build it up at some point you are going to, you know, reach the plateau of pigmentation, but you're just going to continue building up that thickness on your lips. Whereas with the Lucent formula, I don't know what kind of magic has gone into this formula, but you can basically continue to build and build and build as much as you want until, you know, the end of time, and it will never get too much or gunky on the lips. They're very hydrating, they're very comfortable, one of the most comfortable lipsticks you're ever going to put on your lips. And then the special thing that happens with these is, as they wear throughout the day, I mean they wear away, but they wear away in a very elegant way, because um, once the initial shine goes away, because obviously they're a um, um, lip balm type formula, so they're going to have a little bit of shine to them, but over time that shine goes away, and what you're left behind with is a little bit of a demi-matte stain on your lips. And I know that those of you who are familiar with this formula, you, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But these wear away in a very different way than something like the formula I have on now. The formula I have on now, you're going to eat something and then just going to basically uh, leave the premises. Whereas this one, somehow in a magical sort of way, stays behind in a more lasting way and I don't really know how else to describe it but I really hope that you're getting an idea of what this formula is all about. Something that I will not do with all of the lipsticks but I will try to demonstrate with one or two colors is what I mean by the buildability of these like how you apply them as a very sheer wash but then you can really build up the color. I'm not going to do it like I said for all of them but we can try it with a couple just so you get an idea. Okay, I removed the lip balm from um, Pat McGrath Labs and we can start with the luxuriously loosened lipstick that currently ranks in the last position so that is uh, the 10th place for me and that will be one of the newest additions to my collection and that is the shade Lame Pri. So Lame Pri is a very light peach nude. Let me apply it and then I will tell you uh, what I think about this color and why it ranks last.
If you're a little bit lighter in tone than I am, I think this is going to be your perfect peachy nude. But I think maybe you can already see the problem just by looking at how this lipstick applied on me. It is just too light for me. I find it too nude, I find it a little bit too concealer lips for my personal taste. But I already knew that that's probably going to be the case because, uh, first of all, I was afraid of this color being too light for me based on the fact that it worked really well on someone like Martina who is actually lighter in tone than I am and the fact that a couple of you had already communicated to me that you have this lipstick and it is indeed quite light if you are of my skin tone. Just for a reference, I wear Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 2 and 1. So, um... I don't like how this lipstick looks on me on its own. I would never wear it on its own, but like I said, that's also not the reason that I bought it. I bought it because I recently discovered this trick where instead of using a lip gloss to make your matte lipsticks a little bit shinier and more creamy, you can put a loosened over top of them. So that's maybe a little uh, something something that I would like to share with you. These lipsticks are not only amazing on their own, but they're also amazing if you put them over top of a matte lipstick formula. I don't think that always works very well with these sort of balms, but for me, for example, I've mentioned that before, but if I use the lip glosses from Lisa Eldridge together with her velvets, the mattes, um, I don't, there, it's not a match made in heaven for me. The two formulas don't match very well and for me the lip gloss kind of eats up the color underneath it. So I could never really find a way to make these mattes a little bit more creamy on days when I felt like having a bit more of like a comfortable creamy type formula instead of a pure matte. And I finally did a couple of weeks ago when I just for shits decided to put on one of my um, loosens over top of one of the velvets and I was like oh my gosh why did I not know about this before it is the most amazing combination ever so I've been doing that on the regular basis since then but I wanted to have a color which is a bit more like a transparent gloss if you will and then I thought of this one I thought of La Mepri I thought this would be the perfect shade that I could put over top of other shades without really changing their tone too much obviously slightly lightening the tone but without really changing it too much and yet adding that layer of comfort and shine and creaminess to the matte lipsticks. And it's been working really well. That is uh, the only way I have been using La Mepri. You can feel free to tell me actually in the comments what you think, but I find La Mepri to be a little bit too concealer lips for my taste on me. All right, at position number nine, we have another one of my loosens that is quite new to my collection. As you can also see from the bullet, this is the shade Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi is a beautiful coral. Honestly, one of the best creamy corals that I have in my collection. The only reason that it is ranking at position number nine is because I have it for a relatively short time. I've only worn it once and it's not exactly a color that I would wear in this specific season. Like right now in the Netherlands, it is the worst kind of weather you can imagine. We haven't seen the sun in about a hundred years. It's gray, it's rainy and it is up, like natural light does not exist. So uh, this is a lipstick that I would wear a lot more in the spring and in the summer months and maybe just to throw it in here, but I'm ranking these because I have to but in reality, I adore all of them, pretty much equally, depending on the day. Isn't this color just gorgeous? And did you see how pigmented it applied? This is one of the lipsticks that applies quite pigmented off the bat. Obviously, you can apply a bit and then uh, smudge it around with your fingers so that it is a little bit toned down, if that's your preference. But if you wanted to, you can build it up to be really, really pigmented, almost like an actual cream lipstick. This color is beautiful. It is so fresh. It has the perfect balance between like orange, peach and pink, where it's not either one of those. And it's just the perfect coral. I think I'm going to love wearing this uh, in the summer months. It is such a glorious color. At position number eight, we have yet another one, which is a little bit newer to my collection, and that is the shade Wonder Wheel. Wonder Wheel is what I would describe as a warm, like, pink color. It has a little bit of red tones to it, but honestly, I feel like it is actually just like a warm pink. It's not a cool-toned pink, it's not 
Barbie blue toned pink. There's quite a bit of warmth to this color, which is why I chose it. But let me tell you what happened when I was purchasing this. I have a bunch of her loosens already. I wanted to buy more. She didn't release any in the past year. And then I was like, which of the pinks, pinks are not usually colors that I really go for, which of the pinks might look more or less flattering on my complexion? Let's buy those because I'm out of other colors to buy. By the way, something that I may have forgotten to mention that, I'm really, really sorry, but you can see that uh, the bullets have also the little Lisa Eldridge logo imprinted on them. So, this is Wonder Wheel applied in like one light layer. Let me build it up now. A beautiful watermelon pink, again a color that is probably going to be more suitable in the summer and I'm going to probably fall in love uh, with more in the summer. But as far as pinks are concerned, this one has a lot of warmth to it, so I think it will uh, suit a lot of different types of uh, skin tones out there. It is a really beautiful, fresh and vibrant color. And I At position number seven, we've got uh, one of my oldest loosens, I think, if maybe not my first loosened, and that is the shade Atomic Cherry. Atomic Cherry is basically a coral red. It's not really a coral in the sense that uh, it's like Je ne sais quoi, which has a bit more of like a balance between the orange and the pink. This one really quite leans on to the orange red spectrum. I'm really hoping that Atomic Cherry is coming across different on camera compared to Wonder Wheel because like I said, natural light is not really an option right now so I'm filming with my ring light so mm, I don't know that the colors are coming across 100% true to color. I think they are but you know, I really hope that this is uh, coming across different than uh, Wonder Wheel so maybe just let me show you the bullets next to each other so that you can see the difference. But you can see this is so much more like a red orange and this is more of like a warm pink with maybe a hint of red to it. There's only one con that I can mention about these lipsticks and particularly with the shade Atomic Cherry and I don't know why that happens with Atomic Cherry but um, this color tends to stick to like dry patches on your lips a little bit more than any of the others. Like I've never really experienced that with any of the other colors, but like even now, because I've rubbed my lips a few times to remove stuff, I can see that I'm developing some dry crusties on my lips and I can see that Atomic Cherry is starting to cling onto those. So that is the only color that I would say is a little bit more finicky in the sense that you, your lips need to be well hydrated and um, exfoliated so that it, this doesn't cling on to any dry patches but other than that it is a beautiful uh, really really vibrant like coral red coral orange red at position number six we have another red and another shade that is relatively new to my collection i only got it like in the past um i think half a year or so and that is the shade palazzo my favorite uh, lipstick color ever to wear is red, which is why I have a lot of reds. And because I have a lot of Lisa Aldridge's velvet mattes and insanely saturated reds, and I have a bunch of reds from other brands that are really gorgeous, I didn't think that I needed Palazzo. But then again, I was looking to buy something new in her formula and I thought, well, I don't really have a red in that formula, like a proper red, so why not try Palazzo? And I fell in love with Palazzo. It is such a gorgeous color. But this is another one of those colors that is quite pigmented right off the bat. Bam. Even now, looking at the viewfinder, I'm looking at Palazzo and I'm falling in love with it all over again and I'm starting to question my choice at ranking it sixth because I could easily swap it around with the shade that is in the fifth position right now because I just love this shade. It is such a beautiful, more classic red which is not blue-toned. Like a classic red would be something that is a little bit more blue-toned. I don't think we have that yet in the luxuriously loosened formula. This is more of like a deeper, 
a little bit brown toned red but at the same time without it being too warm or too cool it is just such a beautiful easy to wear red and you saw how much pigment that lipstick gave off as i put it on my lips obviously like i said if you use the little trick with like um smudging it on your lips you can get it to be far less pigmented than this but given that i have a lot of her other colors and a lot of her other colors do not really build up to this level of pigmentation the first time i wore palazzo i was honestly quite surprised uh, about the level of pigment that comes off here but at the same time i think it's so pretty and it's such a comfortable red it's not oh maybe something that i should have mentioned before when i was talking about the luxuriously loosened formula in general um because I classify them more as a tinted lip balm and that's not really an issue that I have with tinted lip balms I don't really talk about it a lot but something now that I applied this color uh, and the level of pigmentation reminded me of a feature of these lipsticks that I also truly appreciate they never bleed uh, on my lip lines so a lot of other cream type lipsticks say the Divinals from Pat McGrath Labs for example, a Divinyl from Pat McGrath Labs would have a very similar level of pigmentation, shine and creaminess to Palazzo from Lisa Eldridge. But the Divinyls unfortunately bleed on me. Even with a lip liner, even with preparing my lips with a lip primer, they will bleed on me. Whereas these lipsticks, as creamy as they are, as much as I pile them on my lips to apply the level of pigment that I want, I never they never bleed on my lips like palazzo will never leave my lip lines which is something that I so appreciate about this formula because sometimes I would like to have a red that is in a creamier more comfortable formula but I also don't want to fuck around with having to reapply my lip liner throughout the day and this is just the perfect shade for that at position number five we've got another newcomer that also looks barely used and that is the shade rose official Rose Official falls under the categories of nude for me. So this is a deeper, rosy, browny, mauvey nude. Uh, I really wanted to have something in Lisa Eldridge's luxur luxuriously loosened line that is a bit more on the rosy side, but nude without it being too pink or without it being too berry or too purple. And this just strikes all the chords uh, because it has a little bit of rosiness to it, but it also has depth. Um, that looks very very flattering and it doesn't really clash with my sort of like neutral to warm undertones. Shades like this are one of the reasons I love Lisa Eldridge so much because she really knows what she's doing especially when it comes to like more neutral nude type shades. Okay I want to be honest with you past this point the ranking of the four lipsticks that I'm going to talk about may change at any given point in time. I think uh, if you had asked me last year which my favorite loosened is I would have probably told you that is it, that it is this shade. This is the shade Meet Me in Berlin and I think you can vi visibly see how much I've loved this lipstick because I'm already down to the um, Lisa Eldridge logo. This is the most perfect 90s brown. Let me put it on. Honestly. Tell me this is not the perfect 90s brown. Every self-respecting 90s kid needs to have the perfect brown in their collection and this one happens to be one of mine. It is just perfect in every single way. It is not too grungy but it has a little bit of grunge to it. It is not too cool toned but it is also not too warm toned. It just straddles all of these lines so perfectly in such a perfectly balanced manner and it is just absolutely glorious. I love it. It goes with everything. You can uh, tone it down, you can build it up if you want it to look a little bit more you know punchy and grungy and more present. I don't really know what to tell you guys. Deep down I am and will always be a 90s kid and I really was missing a lipstick like this in my collection and I'm so happy that Lisa Eldridge gave me the perfect shade. Meet me in Berlin. At position number three we have another one which I only obtained this year which is the only reason you're not seeing uh, more use out of it and I obtained it a little bit later through the year but this is the shade Painterly which is another one of the most perfect nudes. Chef's kiss, isn't it? 
Now, while Meet Me, Meet Me in Berlin is truly a 90s, Painterly has a little bit of chocolateness to it, but it also has a bit of mauve, a bit of purple, a bit of those like browny nude tones, and it is just another one of those deeper nudes that I personally love so much. I don't like shades like La Mepri or Velvet Fawn or whatever it is, one of those like Intrigue, the really, really light nudes. I don't like those on myself. My perfect nudes are in this tonality. They are a little bit deeper, they have a little bit more presence, um, and they just flatter me so much more than something like La Mepri. There are just so many different tones going on here without anyone really overtaking the wheel, and it's the kind of color that really like suits every kind of look that you do, and it's the kind of nude that basically goes with everything, so if you're looking for a very comfortable like nude neutral type lipsticks that go with every sort of look and you can throw on in your purse and reapply very easily, I feel like Painterly is definitely among the first ones that I would recommend. Okay, and the next two, even in my ranking, I've put like little arrows that they may change depending on the day because for the life of me, I cannot tell you which one of them is more favorite of mine than the other. Picking my favorite Lisa Eldridge Lucent was already so difficult, but let's say that for the time being, I'm going to uh, put Kitten Mischief on the second position. Kitten Mischief, please pay attention to how much use this lipstick has. And this is another one that I bought this year. I purchased Atomic Cherry, the coral red, when they first launched, I want to say almost two years ago, uh, and I only purchased Kitten Mischief in the beginning. Granted, it, it's already been almost a year since I've had Kitten Mischief, but please see how much of that nub is still in there. I'm pretty sure Kitten Mischief is going to be one of the first ones that I have to repurchase on the short term. Let me put it on so that you can see why. Now, if the name of this lipstick wasn't enough, Kitten Mischief, I mean, come on, cat person here. If the name of this wasn't enough, just tell me that, the, that this lipstick isn't the Lame Pre 2.0. This is my perfect peach nude. This is a peachy pink, which leans either a little bit more orange or a little bit more pink, depending on how you pair it with the rest of your makeup and your clothing. It is a little bit of a chameleon color, but it is definitely what I would qualify as a nude peach but the kind of nude peach that works on someone of a slightly like someone who isn't like the color of sheet of paper. I think La Pri works really well for people who are very light skinned, but as soon as you go a little bit up in the tanning options, I think Kitten Mischief becomes the perfect peachy nude. It is just absolutely splendid. I fell in love with this color in the beginning of the year after doubting for a very long time whether it wouldn't be too light for me. The only reason I didn't purchase this when these first released was that I was afraid that just like Lame Pri, this would be too light for me. But it turned out that, is, that it is the perfect peach nude and I love it so much um, that as soon as this is gone I'm going to repurchase it. And in the first place we have what is probably either my oldest or one of my oldest. I can't for the life of me remember if I bought Atomic Cherry first or Spirit It Away, but Spirit It Away is one of the first loosens that I bought shortly after the release. And again, you can see from the amount of use this lipstick has that uh, it is pretty much as far gone as Kitten Mischief, only I've had it for a little bit longer. Um, I had a phase when I wasn't really using this color and the past couple of months I have re-fallen in love with it. Spirited away, and again, just, you know, the name, the reference make me, makes me all giddy and warm on the inside, but it is the perfect terracotta nude. It's got a bit of brown, a bit of red, uh, a little bit of those, like, warmer sort of terracotta tones to it, and I just absolutely love it, and the reason I have re-fallen really in love with it lately is because I think it is the perfect um, addition or like the perfect complement to one of the holiday queens from Pat McGrath Labs. I think Sunset, sun, sunset something, Sunset Romance, the one with the terracotta tones. Um, I used this lipstick on the day that I demoed Sunset Romance and I thought the two make such a perfect pairing that ever since I cannot really imagine wearing that quint without wearing uh, Spirit It Away. And I've been just wearing Spirit It Away a bit more often because for whatever reason I've sort of, I had sort of like forgotten about it and now because of this 
Queen from Pat McGrath Labs, I was reminded how much I love this uh, lipstick and I've been wearing it a lot more and it has quickly, you know, gotten back to being one of my favorite uh, creamy nudes. I just absolutely love it. Again, it is not a very light nude, it has a little bit of depth to it but it is just so beautiful and so flattering. Again, I can't imagine that there's anyone out there who wouldn't like Spirited Away. Unless you're maybe very cool toned, in which case this might be a little too orange, like a little too warm for you. And then you can go for one of the other nudes, but oh my gosh, just such a perfect color if you have my skin tone. And unfortunately for you, but luckily for my lips, this was the last Lucent that I currently have in my possession. By far I don't have all the luxuriously Lucent uh, lipsticks from Lisa Aldrich, which given how much I love them is probably surprising to you, because you probably thought that I'm going to swatch each and every one of them that have ever come out. Nope, there are some that I still do not have and uh, I don't think I'm going to buy because I've considered buying them quite a lot Unless you know she doesn't give us any more loosens next year as well And then I'm you know I'm out of other lipsticks to buy in that line and I have to buy the pinks that are not going to suit me But let's hope that next year will be the year that Lisa Eldridge finally gives us more loosens Because I cannot wait to add other lipsticks from this lipstick line to my collection They're just so perfect As someone who themselves consumes a lot of beauty YouTube I know what it's like to, you know, watch a video and have the feeling that you need to like go and buy something Because it is the best thing uh, invented since, you know, french fries but honestly, these are. These are the best thing invented since french fries because they're just such a unique, such a beautiful formulation in an array of gorgeous shades. I cannot imagine anyone out there not being able to pick a shade that suits them and enjoy this formula thoroughly. Anyway, I'm obviously dying to know if you have any of the loosens from Lisa Aldrich, how would you rank them? And you don't have to rank all of your loosens for me, but if you can give me your top three, that would be amazing. I would appreciate it so much. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!